Hey everyone, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a tutorial on using the Grain Synth Engine to time stretch and pitch shift samples. If you like this tutorial, please give us a subscription on our YouTube channel. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a grain resynth module in our structure view. And like all the grain modules in Reactor 5, these are eight years old now, so they are a little out of date, and the uh, sound quality is not quite as nice as I would like. However, you can still get some pretty great time stretching and pitch shifting effects out of them. And they are by far the easiest way to get those effects in Reactor, so they're what we'll be working with today. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set this module up to replay and loop the samples that we're going to store in it. And I'm going to use a bunch of very basic default values to set it up with. Uh, however, since this is always resynthesizing a sound uh, using granular resynthesis, even when it's set to not pitch shift and play back at its normal speed, uh, you might still hear some artifacts. And that might be my own ineptitude with these modules. I'm not quite sure. But so basically what we're going to do is set the gate and amplitude modules to be controlled by incoming gate signals. We're going to set the pitch to always be zero. We're going to use a selector knob to control uh, which sample is being played back, and we have some constants for grain size and smoothness of resynthesize. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is to load a sample map that I've prepared. And I've set this sample map up so that every sample in it has a root value of zero. And what that means is that the sample will play back at its original pitch um, whenever the pitch input is equal to zero, which we have it set to with a constant at this moment. And that'll be... that'll make it easier for us to pitch shift later on. And you'll see how that'll work. Now let's just check to make sure this will play back uh, normally. All right, so now let's talk about how we can automate the speed and pitch of the playback of the grain resynth module. So what I'm going to do is divide the length of the sample by 16. And we're going to use a modulo module. Uh, in conjunction with the position output. The position output is going to give us the current playback time in milliseconds. And so by using the position as the A input and the um, length divided by 16 as the B input, we can get a value of 0 to 15 coming out of the div output of the modulo. And that'll be the current position in a step sequencer that we can use to play back the pitch and speed. So I'm going to use an event table as our sequencer. And it's very easy to set up, which is my motivation for using it. Well, there's definitely better things we could use. And we're going to run the output of the event table directly into the speed input of the grain resynth module. And I'll rename the table speed. <coughs> and also notice that I set the length of the table to be 16, and that way we can use the output from the modulo to read the 16 values in our event table. And let's take a second to set the table up to look a little more in line with the sampler. Let's get rid of the scroll bars and the label. 
and there are a few options to set and you can get a new menu by right clicking on the uh, event table let's just turn off the right table position and also set it to be in table draw mode and that'll make it very easy for us to set up the values in the table and I'm just going to shrink it down to size So the table has a range from 0 to 1, and when the table is equal to 1, the sample plays back at full speed, and when you set it to other speeds, you can notice that the playback marker actually slows down when the speed is less than 1. Alright, so being able to draw new values into the table is pretty great, um, but the default mode is a little weird. You can see when I draw past the end of the table, you can kind of wrap, the values kind of wrap back around. We can turn that off by going into the properties and setting the clip wrap parameter to clip. And I just think that's a slightly cleaner way to handle things. Okay, so to expand on this concept is pretty simple. You can create a, another table just by duplicating the first one and run it directly into the pitch input. And maybe you change the range to be from 0 to 12 or maybe from negative 12 to 12. Um, and it would also probably be a good idea to add a table for the grain value to get some change in the grain size. Well, I'm not going to do that right now. Alright, so as I mentioned briefly earlier, it'd probably be a good idea to add another table for grain size, maybe another one for smoothness. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that could be done to improve this structure, but I think it's a pretty good start for a time stretch and pitch shift device. If you guys have any questions or you want to check out some more of our tutorials, please visit us at reactortutorials.com. All right, have a good week.